young I was told that there was a creek lined with gold solid gold Welcome back everyone glad to see you for an exciting season it's definitely a lot shorter drive this year driving up to Elk City Idaho and then up to Pierce Idaho after that we started off our journey leaving from my place in Black Canyon City, working our way to Utah. Do we need to get into Toho? I'm in Toho right now. Okay. So we came up here last October and we investigated this private claim and um, since then we've learned quite a lot of information about mining in Idaho. So there are several departments that control mining operations in Idaho. One of them is the IDWR, the Idaho Department of Water Resources. You will also have to coordinate with the Environmental Protection Agency. And depending where the claim is located, you'll also have to coordinate with the U.S. Forest Service. What Idaho has done is classified certain creeks and rivers as either open or closed as either seasonal or open all year. So you have to reference this creek that you want to mine on. Unfortunately for us, Leggett Creek has not even been classified. And as it is in the South Fork of the Clearwater River drainage, we had to go through special permissions for a dredging permit. So after we submitted our uh, dredging permit to the IDWR, we, have, we of course got a call back saying that um, Leggett Creek was closed to dredging and that um, we could apply for another creek uh, if we wanted to. I must say the IDWR has been very helpful. The people that work there and the people that I've talked to are all very friendly, very helpful, and they just want to make sure you get the best opportunity to go mining. So of course having no other claims in Idaho, we looked for the GPA claims and we found uh, the claims up on Oregon Creek that Jesse and Kathy had very graciously opened up to the GPA members. Welcome to Idaho. So we wanted to continue the application process to get a dredge permit on Leggett Creek. So what we have to do in Idaho is fill out a joint application. I was shot down in flames and my uh, mining permit was rejected. The cliff overhang looks like you would clip it with your trailer. The air conditioner is on top, but there's enough clearance. A little scary until you see what the distance is. Arriving Leggett Creek on June 6th. First part of June, we thought we'd be okay as far as weather, but we went through a cold spell and it was cold. Well, we were dressed up, wrapped in blankets, and had to wear hats and gloves for, it was a period of about a week. We were able to camp in the Luggett Creek campground. The upper portion of it is the GPAA claim, and we met some really nice people there. Will and Christine were our next door neighbors, and I think they're gonna be lifelong friends. The GPAA claim starts right about where Bob and Retta's truck is. As you can see from these drone pictures, the campground is long and narrow. Another benefit to this campground is Elk City is very near. They have a laundromat, showers, grocery store, restaurants, post office, bar. So as long as you are actively on your mining claim and you are actively mining, you can camp there for the whole summer. This area had a porta potty and it was really nice to be able to use that and not fill the tanks in the trailer. At the end of the claim is an easy access down into Leggett Creek. This is a very busy campground with people coming and going constantly in here, usually staying for their two weeks and then moving on. Here's Will and Christine's uh, dog Chopper meeting Pip for the first time. On the upper portion of our claim, we found an area where a creek was running early, early summer. We had water. As the summer went on, it did start to dry off and became just a small little trickle. But we were able to get in there with the river sluice and do a little searching and um, prospecting to see what we could find and what was in that area. But it was beautiful. 
we um, nicknamed it Fern Creek just because of all the ferns and the lush grasses on the side of the banks. It was very peaceful in there and I really enjoyed it. It was um, a good time there. You can see here on Fern Creek that it was really cold in there. I even had Pip bundled up in a coat and a blanket. We didn't find a lot of gold, but at least we did find some. That was exciting to see that in the pan. Not like Alaska, though. Driving to the claim one day, we came across this fawn laying off to the side of the road. Next day, we came back and it was gone. This is a view from the west side of the creek up on the old logging road looking down to where Marietta is. Doing the river sluice, we um, set it up so that I was in the sun and the sun kept us warm. Even though Pip was still cold, but he enjoyed climbing on top and trying to get my attention from above. He's such a cutie. I was able to set up Bob's High Banker and do a research system there so I could do some testing on the east slope. Brought all those concentrates back to camp and ran them through the gold cube. And we found just a little uh, picker out of that. Which came in handy. After Fern Creek, we moved down into Luggett. It's actually in the middle of the claim, and I wanted to do a little prospecting, a little river sluicing there, doing some sampling and some testing. Didn't have a lot of luck. Not a black. So Marietta and I did testing on our claim on Leggett Creek here in several areas. It was really nice being out here along the creek in the middle of the woods, just uh, listening to the birds and the sound of the creek going by. See some of the aspects of the claim here. There's some nice open areas. Best option for the USA claim is to just get a sluice, set it up in the creek, get a nice comfortable chair with a beverage, and um, feed some material. A couple of little waterfalls along Leggett Creek. So at the USA claim here on Leggett Creek, it's basically the same as up on our claim. You can metal detect, you can hand pan, and you can river sluice. One nice advantage of the USA claim are these placer mines that are located above it. These placer mines were hydraulically mined and all of that slurry went down their slopes into Leggett Creek. I hiked up to Leggett Placer Mine and it's quite a steep climb. The whole pit is now fully uh, covered in trees. You can't even hardly tell it's a pit until you get to the rim. I came up to this uh, pit mine on the very top right about here and these uh, sides are very steep. For more information, go to the Elk City Museum. They have lots of displays. One day, Christine and Will came down, and I was teaching Christine how to use the river sluice, how to do some panning, how to do some prospecting. Will was there to entertain us and assist whenever we needed some heavy lifting. When there's a will, there's a way. Tom came up with a plan. He did a bush fix right on site to make this work so we could do a test hole. Well, as I said, our application to dredge Leggett Creek was rejected, but I did get a temporary water permit to draw water from Leggett Creek. I wanted to take advantage to test the northeast corner of this claim and see what kind of material was there and how deep uh, bedrock was. Doing a recirculation system here allowed me to stay within the rules. Using the suction nozzle, I had no worries about air going up the tube, but what I had was a water problem. I couldn't keep enough water into the hole to get suction going. What I would do is use the water jet nozzle on the nozzle and spray some water into the hole, turn that off, then suck it up, and then repeat. I did increase the uh, hole size to get a little bit more water overflow from the pond coming back into the hole, which also helped a little. But after about four feet, I lost all suction in the hose. I'm trying to push material up about six feet of elevation gain. So we're disappointed that our hopes for dredging in Leggett Creek were dashed. 
But as with every rejection, there's always a positive in that we're going to be able to dredge on Ora Grand Creek. So there is some hope that we might be able to get another application through as the uh, EPA is turning over responsibilities to the Idaho Department of Environmental Quality, uh, which may ease up on some of those rules. In my rejection letter, they um, go into explicit detail as to why I was rejected, so I can address a lot of those concerns and hopefully uh, mitigate those. So my advice before getting involved in mining in, in any state, and especially in Idaho, is to uh, go to the websites and learn all the rules, regulations, and especially for the area that you want to mine in. This was a lot of work. Tom really worked hard on this. He did all the digging, the layout, the design, how to hold and maintain the water so that we could suck it off to the side, not put it back into the stream, doing all, using all the rules and regulations, and his efforts were for naught. So how deep are you? Four feet. Okay, now you're in frame. So I stopped at four feet, did a clean out of the sluice, and found zero gold. Talking with some old timers in the area, I found out where I was digging there, bedrock is about eight feet down, so I had another four feet to go. Every year before the start of the dredging season on the south fork of the Clearwater River, there is a meeting. Several state and federal agencies are represented. The U.S. Forest Service is there, Idaho Department of Environmental Quality, the Idaho Department of Water Resources, local sheriff. They cover all the rules for the current year and answer any of the miners' questions. The end of the road claim is a little difficult to get to. It's located right next to private property, um, which you would probably need permission to go through their property to get to. The only other way is to go over a four-wheel drive trail. Wolves were reported seen in this area as well, so be careful. So you see the fence line here, that's all private property. Well, Marietta and Will do some prospecting with a sluice in the creek, Christine and I are gonna hike up to this abandoned mine that we see on the map. It was a quite a steep climb to get up into this little draw area here, but you can see that this area was extensively worked. This draw area was worked from side to side, and you can see how much material they pulled out of here. I really like the end of the road claim. We were able to get up there and do some testing, do some searching, do some wandering, checking out the area. It was a nice area. I'd like to go back there again and um, maybe give it a better, better try. I believe it was the Chinese that were in here working, as you can see, the very neatly stacked rocks here. The Chinese always stack their tailing piles very neatly, often making walls. White miner tailing piles are just strewn everywhere. No block that way? Yeah, it's all stacked block. Is it almost straight down there? We can walk that ridge again. That's pretty, pretty yeah, even slope. Yeah, let's not risk it. We'll just climb back up these rocks. I don't have life flight here. That's really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like it'd be a nice trail, but it, I, th I see it just drop off right there. Hiking back down to Will and Marietta, you can see Will by his motorbikes. Thank you, everyone, for watching. 
We hope you found some good information about the Leggett Creek and Newsome area. We're going to pack things up here and head up to the Orgrande.